18 years of psychotropic drugs. When I was in the boat that was sinking. And this drug cartel and... And a gun to my head, um, borderline personality disorder. They feared they'd hide me someplace where nobody looked for me. Suicidal. I wanted something life changing. I wanted something worth living for. They were giving me an opportunity to get out. Maybe even something worth dying for. All right, so let's start with the first question. Um, how does an outline of your typical day looks like? Well, my typical day starts pretty early. And I get up and I grab my journal and I grab my music and I sit there and I quiet my spirit, which is something that it's easier to do at five in the morning than it is mm. when people are up and moving around. And in that place, I just have some contemplation and things come to me and I get clarity on some things. So that will be kind of like your thinking time. Yeah, thinking and sinking. So after you're done with that first stage of journaling, what is your next step in the day? There are certain habits that I have and one of them is being quiet, one of them is journaling, one of them is, is speaking out declarations, I am statements, mm. my vision statements, because I'm, I'm learning that I need to plan my life in the next five years because in five years I'm going to end up somewhere. Why not be intentional about it instead of just drifting? I also like to be in the habit of reading something every day. What other habits or typical things you do during the day, things that we can learn from? Well, I usually try and, and figure out where the, the point of most pain or pressure is in my life because sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's emotional. It's always an invitation to improve a skill set. We know when our shoulder's in pain that we need to make some type of adjustment. And same way with emotions. If I'm having emotional pain, I need to figure out where that landed typically in childhood and where I'm living from that same memory even today. What motivates you at this age to kind of keep growing as a person, to keep reading, to keep trying to improve yourself? I know from living long enough that I can be motivated by pain or I can be motivated by wisdom and know that there's a better way to live. And I, I prefer to be on the wisdom side. And my other motivation is to help other people to learn some of the tools I wish I would have had. So I wouldn't have had so many uh, pain-filled failures. You know, a failure is not a bad thing unless it's chronic, ongoing, and never overcoming. And then we've got something else going on. I know that in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. So... I try and look for wise counsel around me in all areas of my life, not just spiritual, not just emotional, not just financial, not just relational, not just any one part of my life, but I want people that are excelling in their field and I want their wisdom. I don't want somebody that's been divorced 20 times giving me relationship advice, <laughs> you know. So I'm looking for people that are successful you know, a failure here and a failure there, that's called life. Um, you learn from that. But when it's chronic ongoing problems, then you can either learn or let it overtake you and give up. Let's say you have 30 seconds to talk to Miss Lane when she was 18 years old. What will you tell her? Be teachable. Be humble. Be hungry for more understanding and truth. Because we're always feeding an appetite of some kind. Um, I want to just have fun and have freedom. Well, there's a difference in life between cheap thrills and true well-being. Mm -hmm. And I always went for the cheap thrills because it was fast and it was fun and it was slick, hip, cool. It was not life building. And it was always chasing something outside of me and the problems that I was really suffering from were the problems that were inside of me. I was always looking for more, but I couldn't figure out what it was. If I have enough money, and that's another idol that will fall. There was a point where I had the money I could think of and a gun to my head trying to figure out how not to kill myself. So success for me looks like a well-balanced life. And I, I try and go for authentic well-being and not just cheap thrills today. And that comes from knowing who I am, knowing whose I am, and living uh, basic spiritual principles that have restored my life to wholeness after being suicidal. Now, obviously, we can see this very, very refined version of Miss Lynn. You are now balanced. You're able to 
um, take whatever wisdom you have accumulated and share it with other people. But we just don't arrive there. That crazy story that you told me about when you were involved in this drug cartel and what behaviors, what patterns brought you to get there? Like what was happening in your mind that allowed that type of um, environment to be where you were standing in that point? Well, I always wanted something more. My parents did the best that they could. And this is not a blaming or accusing session, but there was just real low joy in our house. And when there's no joy and and there's not a lot of nurturing and I will find it somewhere and I couldn't seem to find it. It's like feeding an addiction. You always need a little bit more. I'd been to church that, that was like boring and I wasn't looking for bored. <laughs> you know, I wanted something big. I wanted something life changing. I wanted something worth living for. Maybe even something worth dying for. So whatever it is, it, it's a desire of my heart to have adventure. I just didn't find it where I'd been exposed to something. So I shut the door on it and started looking for it in other places. There's just no satisfaction. And I thought that everything I saw that was shiny was going to be the answer. And every time I got it, it was like holding sand in your hands. It would just slip through your fingers and it was empty. And what was really empty was me. Pursuing my own agenda, it was all about me. This void that you're filling inside is what gets more people, most people, in, in situations like that. They are looking for something else, something that will fill them. They usually step into something that is not what you should be stepping, like drugs, alcohol, um, lust. If you continue that path, eventually you will get to a point where your even your life will be in danger. When that happened, was that a wake-up call for you? Or still, that was nothing that will say, oh, I might be doing something wrong here? Yeah, yeah, it was a real wake-up call when I was 17 and I was told that the FBI was going to um, <clears throat> invite some of my friends to go to prison for a while. And since I was a minor, they were giving me an opportunity to get out. And so I ended up going to a uni Oral Roberts University. They feared they'd hide me someplace where nobody would look for me. Well, they certainly weren't thinking of Bible college, um, but I had been become willing then to pay attention because my life kind of depended on it. There were some radical changes that happened in my life, but I didn't know how to keep all the freedom that I had gotten. I didn't even know what honor was. It, you know, we called it love when it, it was really abuse. I hear Popsicle barking. Yeah, Popsicle is wanting to join. She's she's guarding the house. Yeah, she called me this morning telling me that why was she not invited to I've the... asked her to stay off the phone. Oh, you told her? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was my fault then. Do you think operating from your ego when it comes to business, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I think operating from, from my ego has gotten me in trouble. I want, I think, I feel. Mm -hmm. And instead of operating from that knowing and from wisdom... What will be the challenges that you have to face on a daily basis, on a big scheme or minor things that you have to be constantly on top of them so they don't over overtake you? Well, for me, it's just, it's called discipline and comfort is a death to destiny. So I need to always be hungry for more wisdom, understanding, godly skills, realize where I'm coming from, selfish, impulsive, ego-driven decisions, whether it be in my relationships or my finances or whatever. And, and I need to use wisdom, which might mean I don't get the instant gratification, but I get the, the success that lasts. And for me, that's hard. I want, I want what I want when I want it. But emotions are like unruly children. And I can't follow my feelings. I've got to follow my knowing that comes from sinking with God. Bottom line is developing new habits and sticking with them. You have been in life-threatened situations. Um, when you were 17, running away from uh, the drug cartel, avoiding going to um, jail, because I didn't know that part. Yeah. Um, and also, you show me uh, a video of you in a boat in Africa where the boat was sinking. But your, your emotional state, you were relaxed, you were, you were stress-free. What do you think about when people operate from a standpoint of fear? When fear is your motivator um, okay. to do things? Yeah, fear. 
fear. I hate fear. False emotions appearing real. It has caused me to make 99.9% of all of my mistakes. Fear is like an app running in the background, and I'm living from memories in the past, and I'm not seeing the hope in the future. And so fear and all the negative emotions that follow with it just bring destruction to my life. And today I just need to know that I've I've honed some skills. I've done the due diligence. I need to make a decision. When I was in the boat that was sinking, I don't think I had any concept that this could really be the end. This can't be happening. I'm going to videotape this because if I live through this, I want the video. <laughs> you know, it was a life threatening situation for sure. But yeah. Shoot. What is the mislead? method to overcome obstacles and challenges when they present themselves so if it's not bringing joy love peace and uh, success all around you and success means i'm grateful to be alive when i wake up in the morning I'm not looking for a way to self-destruct what practices of self-awareness that are simple for people that might be watching would you recommend one thing that i've i've noticed whenever i finger point or blame somebody outside of me for the problems i'm having when i am disturbed there's something wrong with me it's not about hating myself punishing myself or condemning myself like i used to it it's about um understanding where it's coming from and with wisdom get understanding. I have to watch my motives in life because you can't fix me and you can't make life better or worse for me. I have those choices and decisions to make. I used to hang out with people thinking, well, I can change them. And then I'm the one that ended up getting high. I don't find my core group in crack houses today. If we don't know who we are, don't have the character and integrity and wisdom, to stand up and do the right thing, then who we hang with can have more influence on our lives than even our genes. I like to have relationships with people that we both get something out of it today. They're life building. What about activities? What, what are the activities? That I know I've heard and I've seen it on the news that you like to dance um, in front of people in the park with Popsicle. I like to dance. It's fun. And, and it was an amazing song that Popsicle and I were dancing to in the park. And I really don't care what people think today. They may think I'm out of my mind, but could be out of their mind. You said like you no longer care about what, but what people think about you. Um, yeah. How long did, did it took for you to get that way and what benefits that had brought to your life? Well, I heard once you'd be surprised what people think of you if they if you realized how little they really do. I heard somebody else say you're only I'm only responsible for what I say, not what you hear. So I have to look at the filter of my heart and where's that coming from and when I realize it's 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 coming from my mouth and I'm critical about everybody else. Maybe it's because those are the voices that I speak to myself with. Why do you think it is that us as human beings, as social animals, we care so much about what society says? It's, it's a lack of identity. I don't, didn't know who I was. I didn't know whose I was. In fact, I was diagnosed with um, borderline personality disorder. Acquiring um, knowledge and then applying it actually practicing what you learn that's part of the risk and it's part of the faith and it's part of the fun it's part of the failure and there's suffering too but it's not all total failure mm -hmm. but it's short-term suffering long-term reward i heard it said once it's the high cost of low living the high cost of low living yeah that's a good one yeah okay miss lynn thinking. where can people find you if they want to hear more from your teachings and in people that want to follow what you're doing uh lynn eldridge.com instagram lynn eldridge official facebook lynn eldridge we're very excited about your book bipolar to beloved i've been off all psychotropic drugs for over nine and a half years after 18 years of psychotropic drugs. They don't fix you. It's called right-mindedness. It's called wisdom. It's, there's only certain ways to live, and it's not with unforgiveness and hate and negative, critical, judging, condemning attitudes. What you sow, you reap. You can call it karma. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a spiritual principle. And, and today I know that I have some measure of control over my life when I decide to be kind and when I decide to serve. And I can sow that and I'll reap it too. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with the people that are going to be watching. And I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.